in the X Pages world, we're quite fond of talking about how we're we've bound components to things, whether that be documents or beans or whatever. We're we're talking about I've got this component and I bound it to something. And generally when we say that, what we mean is that we bound the value attribute to some EL expression that says whatever value the, the user enters, place it in this property of this object. So that's, we, we've all, you know, done that. Um, <clears throat> but components also have this mysterious binding property. It's on all of them, and it's been there since since 850. I've, I've seen it for years. I've always wondered what it is. Always meant to, to go find out. Never did. Well, mad props to Cameron Greger, because he told me what it is, and now I'm going to tell you. It turns out that when we define one of these expressions, we are not binding a component to this property of an object. We are binding its value. And I'm just going to verbally hover on that because we've all been saying this wrong. I've been saying this wrong for five years. We are binding the components of value to a, a property. We are not binding the component to the property. That's what this is for. This is for binding the whole component to a property. So in this case, I've got this page view object and it's an index of index view. If you want to know how index view automatically gets created as page view because I'm on index.xsp, check out Jesse Gallagher's XPage controllers project. Go ahead and pause the video to grab that URL. I've tweaked it slightly so that instead of just getting a controller, I also get a model and a view object. So if I'm on index.xsp, it expects there to be an index model, index view, index controller. If I'm on contact.xsp, then it would be contact model, contact view, and so on. Uh, so if, if you want to understand how all that works, go check out that controller's project because this is just a, a direct variation on, on that technique. And in my faces config, I've got a few things that, that are referring to that. But we're going to come back here in a moment to, to look at why you might want to, to use what I'm about to show you. So I'm saying this component itself, not just its value, but the actual component is bound to the user password component of my page view object, which will be an index of it, an instance of index view. So what that results in is in addition to any primitive data uh, that I uh, or other objects I can store as, as properties of of a bean, in this case I'm actually storing a component, a, a UI component called user password component, and because this is a, a valid bean, it has a getter that returns an instance of UI component and has a setter that accepts one. Uh, in a previous video, Dave Fleety had uh, had asked why I use final. I actually have my Java preferences in designer set to add final whenever it can. Um, that's mostly for compiler purposes. It's it's a slight optimization. If if I had to manually do this, I probably wouldn't bother, but I can tell designer to do it for me, so why not? Um, basically, that just means that once it's been established, it can't be set to something else. I can set properties of it, but I can't overwrite the whole thing within within a block where final applies. So I'm just going to toss that in there because David asked a while back. Anyway, so I've got a getter and a setter. So this is a valid bean, private property, and I can pass it a component and I can retrieve a component. So yay, I've got a component that is actually bound to a property. But why would you ever want to do that? Well, here's one example. I've got uh, a, a theoretical credential page, a login page, where somebody can choose to re remain anonymous and say, just take me in. Okay, I'm anonymous. 
uh, or I can enter a name. But if I enter a name, it's assuming that I'm actually trying to log in as that person. So now I'm validating the password field. Whereas if I didn't have a name, then there's no need to check for a password. So if I enter both a name and a password, okay, now I'm that person. So why, why does this other technique, why is this handy for that? Well, <laughs> if you follow my blog or my Stack Overflow presence or whatever, you know I'm always ranting about, don't use Git Component, Git Component is evil. And you know I have my reasons for that. It's inefficient, it's inelegant, et cetera, whatever. Um, but there, there are two use cases where up until like a day ago, <laughs> I would have told you, okay, Git component is fine for that. And one of them is one of these validators where the validity of one field, so in this case, the validity of the username is dependent of, upon the value in another value, uh, field component rather. The reason is because you can't go ask the model. I'm always telling people, go ask the model, ask the data. Don't try to have one visual component, go ask another visual component. Just ask the data. Well, you can't do that in a validator where they're linked like this because the whole point of validators in JSF is to screen the data to where it never pollutes the model <laughs> with data that isn't valid to begin with. So you can't just go ask your page model, what's the user password? Because it won't be there yet. So, okay, use git component to go find that and ask it what its submitted value is because for those few microseconds, it's actually stored as part of the component, not part of the model. So this is one of the two areas where I've traditionally said, okay, yeah, it's fine for those of us who tend to, to use Java for everything to resort to SSGS just so that we can scour the component tree to find that one component we actually care about right now. Well, now we don't have to. We've never had to, I just didn't know we didn't have to. And the reason is because I can have an object that I can place the component in or rather have it placed in there for me automatically so I don't have to search for it. So how does all this play out? Well because the validity of the value of this input text, namely the username, is dependent upon the value of this input text, I want to bind this input text to an object that I can go ask for it and then it doesn't have to search the component tree. So in my faces config I've defined a validator, uh, specified the full class name, and give it uh, an arbitrary validator ID, arbitrary but still indicative of what it's for, uh, optional authentication in this case. So then on the X page, I've said it has a validator and here's its validator ID. Because this isn't one of the built-in, you know, required or constraint or range or whatever. This is my own totally custom validator. And it looks like this because writing your own validators is not terribly difficult. You just create a Java class that implements this Java X faces validator validator interface and you implement the validate method. This will get past the current faces context, the component it's validating, and its current value. So I want to check to see <clears throat> are they remaining anonymous or have they pa uh, provided a password? because if either is true, we're okay. We'll just let them in. But if they provided a username, so the current value isn't empty, but they have not provided a password, then it's not valid. I need to construct one of these faces messages objects and pass it to a, a validator exception to throw back to the platform. So. To do that, I need both components. I don't actually need a, a handle on the component that, that I'm validating because I'm past one. And since I'm really only caring about its value, I actually ignore that to begin with. But the key is I need this other password component because I need to ask for its submitted value. Well, in this, this framework that I'm using that's based on Jesse's technique, 
um, it's easy for me to get a handle on the the view portion of my MVC layer at that point. So I just get a handle on my view being basically. Now, depending on the way you do it, <clears throat> you might use the um, uh, application get variable resolve or resolve variable technique, um, which actually is what this does under the scenes. Under the scenes, behind the scenes, under the covers. Mixing my metaphors, sorry. A um, <laughs> little bit hyper tonight. Anyway, um, I get a handle on my view bean, and I know that the platform has has given me a handle on the component because on the X page, I told it to. So in my validator, I can just ask the view bean, well, what is that component? And once I have a handle on it, without searching the component tree, that's the key here. I don't have to call git component in SSJS and have it start at the view root and spider the entire component tree checking to see if the ID matches. Because I've already got the component. <laughs> I have a bean and it's storing it for me. I don't have to search. I just ask for it and it's there. And so once I've got that variable, I can check its submitted value. And now I can do my conditional validator. So one last thing about this. Um, <clears throat> normally in our beans, we just indicate a scope, usually private. We indicate a type and a name. In this case, I have marked it as transient. Now, why would I do that? Well, because on our beans, we always, always want to make sure everything is serializable. Because if it doesn't have to be, it doesn't care. But if it does have to be, it is. But um, a couple of folks like Devin Olson, Nathan Freeman, and a few others have asked uh, in response to previous videos, so you've marked this bean as serializable, but you're not, you're not doing any checks to make sure that everything you're passing to it is serializable. Um, well, this is kind of a, a case of why. If, uh, if you mark something as transient in something that is serializable, when the platform tries to serialize the object, it will skip all the transient things for you. So this is sort of my self-documenting way of saying UI components are not serializable. I don't know why they aren't. I again chose not to make them serializable. That might have been a decision of omission, not a decision of commission, but whatever the reason, whatever the cause, uh, UI components are not serializable. So just keep that in mind. This is very, very key. If you use this, just make sure that whatever being you're binding the actual component, not just its value, but the component itself, the whole thing, whatever being you're binding it to, make sure to mark it as transient. Because then if the platform needs to serialize your being, it will serialize everything else and it will ignore the component handles. Uh, and you don't have to worry about it losing that because whenever it needs it, it's there, but you don't want to store it. You need it to be transient. Otherwise, if you're using the default persistent settings, your X page will blow up because it'll try to serialize the, the outer object. And when it gets to this, it'll say it's not serializable and simply fail. So anyway, um, just wanted to toss this out here as just a real quick example of why you would use this property that I've never seen anyone use. I've always wondered what it is, and now I know what it is. So I'll probably use it from time to time. But uh, if you're using get component in SSJS and you've heard or seen me say, don't do that, here's one of the ways where you don't have to because you can just tell it ahead of time. I have an object, put this component in that object and so whenever I need the component, I can just ask the object. I don't have to search for it. And so this might be either one other place where everything else in your code is Java and you've been resorting to SSGS just to find a component. Now you can find it via Java. But even if you're using SSGS for most of your code, this is another way to avoid Git component. 
is if you've got a bean where you can store the component, then you can just ask the bean. 